Welcome to Storytime Soap. Today we are making our hot cocoa soap. So I have my oils and my lye water all ready to go. We're soaping it right around 100 degrees today. So let's just get going. Now this fragrance oil does discolor a little bit, so I am going to put some of the batter aside with some titanium dioxide in it um, before I fragrance. And the white will just be an accent color in here. Now I'm going to go ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and give this a whirl first just to get that titanium dioxide good and incorporated. And it will, titanium dioxide as I've said in the past, will thicken up your batter a little bit. Now I'm going to take, where did it go, my spatula and just scrape the sides and the bottom because I don't want any color fracturing and that happens when you have some titanium dioxide just kind of hanging out. Um, it could still happen, always, it could happen, um, it's also known as glycerin rivers, but making sure it's good and incorporated is a way to avoid that. So I'm adding my fragrance oil in here. Stir it up and give it a whirl. This is really kind of a little fuller than I wanted it. but it'll be all right. Into the remaining batter. And it is getting thick on me. I'm gonna add some gold. And that's just gold mica mixed a little bit of olive oil. And a touch of titanium dioxide. Just to bring that color forward a little bit. Go ahead and scrape as much of this off here as I can. See, this is why I usually use room temperature oils. Soaping at 100, it's starting to thicken up already, so we're going to have to get this in the molds. Okay, we are going to 
to start getting this in the molds because it is getting thick. Holy cow. It's a good thing I'm doing a high top on this because the top is not going to be pretty with a thick mix like this. Let this be a lesson to you. Be patient and let your stuff cool down just a bit more. Go ahead and scrape that out and then go ahead and give these a whack. And now I'm going to pour this up high and hope it mixes in a little bit. And it's not. But that's okay. We know we can help this out just a tad. Okay, well, I had to skip the pouring because it was more of a plop, plop, hurry up and get it in there because my oils were a little too warm and uh, this is what happens. Now, I am uh, going to pipe the top of this, thankfully, since it's not the prettiest top I've ever made, um, but you notice that's why it's a little bit shorter here. I'm trying to make my high top bars a little bit shorter than I have in the past. Um, just to basically so I don't have to charge so much for the bar. Um, and the customers seem to like it now that my high tops are a little actually shorter. So we're going to go ahead and give that a tap just to even it out a little bit. I'll spray this down with alcohol um, to prevent any soda ash and then we'll get to mixing the icing. Okay, here we've got our oils and our lye water. We're going to go ahead and get that mixed up and get ready to get the piping going. Okay, now you see I got a second bowl here. Let me get this a little bit more of a whirl here. Get that good and emulsified. Now what I'm going to do is a double layer or two color piping. So I'm going to take my, ice, my batter here, pour some of it off into this container. <laughs> and 
And into this one, I'm going to add titanium dioxide and no fragrance oil. And to this one, I'm just going to add some of the fragrance oil. And this is a little bit of mocha brown mica mixed with olive oil. And I'm going to dump that in there as well. All right, now we're going to go ahead. We start with the white first, lightest color first. And give that a blend. Make sure all my bubbles are out. And And again, I do tend to um, go for a thicker trace when I'm making my piping. That should be good. I'll just have to take a spatula to that and then over to the brown. All the air bubbles out. And now we have to let this set until it folds in on itself. In other words, you fold it over and it holds its shape. And that's when we know we're ready to pipe. This is a little runnier than I want it to be, but with this kind of fragrance oil that sets up like this, you have to kind of start a little earlier because it could turn into cement fast. So you can kind of see I mixed in the bag like a half chocolate, half vanilla kind of look. So while well, I usually just speed this process along in the videos, but I thought maybe what I would do is talk about some of the questions that we get sometimes. Um, tell you a little bit about the shop, about Jordan and myself. Um, I actually, we started, I started story time a while ago. Um, out of my house, just doing um, home parties. Let me get this crinkly big settled. Okay. Just doing home parties and events. And got the bright idea that uh, it would be easier to have a retail space. And what I mean by easier is not necessarily um, less work, but easier for people to get what they want when they wanted it. A lot of people, um, believe it or not, <laughs> don't like to buy online. They want to pick up and smell the product. Something like this, I, I kind of understand. Um, they want to, to see, smell, touch, feel. Um, you know, bath and body products are something very personal, something you're going to put on your body. And you can't really tell if someone's saying, oh, it smells like hot cocoa or it smells like black raspberry vanilla. Well, some people have never smelled black raspberry vanilla. So I actually started this business and I work a full time job. Um, I work 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. at night. And I'm at the shop every day between probably... <laughs> 8.30, 9 o'clock, um, and I'm here till 1.30, and then I go off to my evening job, and I get up, and I do it all over again. Now Jordan here, I could not do it without Jordan. She's not here today. She has, actually, Mondays off, um, but even on her day off, she went and picked us up some more sodium bicarbonate for our bath bombs. Um... But I couldn't do it without her. She is invaluable as far as this business is concerned. It just would not run without her. And she's always been a good kid. I've always been able to rely on her to do, you know, to be there and, and keep a good head on her shoulders. And without her, um, yeah, story time wouldn't even exist. So 
so when I talked to her about starting the business, she was excited about it, but I told her, you know, there's a, a big learning curve. I've spent years. <laughs> you have to learn in a few months what I've spent years learning. And thankfully, she's a very bright young lady. And she picked up on it fast. Um, excuse me. The first time she did bath bombs, she was about ready to cry. If you've ever made a bath bomb, you'll understand um, they can be a little complicated and temperamental and everything affects them from humidity to what oils you're using. So, yeah, I really need to get bigger piping bags. These little guys are just, you have to refill and refill and refill and it's just a pain. But, anyway, um, the customers really seem to, the ones that come in the store really seem to like Jordan she's she's good with people she's very friendly um, you know I always raised her with that there's no stupid question theory so that she always knew she could come and ask something even no matter how big or small so it's nice and I can rely on her um, to follow regulations like you know don't tell anybody you can cure their acne. We cannot cure acne. FDA will come down on you like the crazy Kool-Aid man bursting through the wall. And that's not what we want. We want to do everything by the book. We want to keep people safe and um, not get people's hopes up. Now, that doesn't mean I can't recommend a product if you have acne-prone skin. But um, as a soaper, you cannot ever claim to fix, cure, or heal anybody's skin. That is, that takes a cosmetic product and turns it into a pharmaceutical. And I have no desire to get into pharmaceuticals. Bag's a little messy. So, yeah, we enjoy our time at the shop here. And uh, yes, um, I get asked a lot, are you tired? I am very tired. I'm tired all the time. But it's just... Um, Kind of the way I was raised, you know, my mom, she is like a robot, man. She just goes, goes, and goes. And I think that's where I get it from, like, that desire to just get something done. You know, if you're just sitting around, you're not being productive, then you wasted your time. And I realized that's not entirely healthy. We all need time off to take a deep breath and a new bag here because that one was getting a little messy we all need time to relax and I do try to make sure I take at least one day a week usually usually a Sunday just to take a deep breath and spend time with my husband and my animals stay as healthy mentally as I can because this is it's hard owning your own business is hard to work in a historical building um, it's actually quite lovely in the front um, if you've ever seen our place uh, the front of the building there's a plaque that says what year it was built and I'm thinking it's like 1816 maybe I could be wrong um, but the front of it's beautiful it's a nice lovely brick building with pillars and it's just, it, it's a, like I said, it's a historical building here in town. And it's right on the main road. Um, I know probably most people watching the video won't, don't even know where Laporte is. Laporte is famous for, get this, Bella Gunness, famous serial killer. He lived here. Um, Charlie Finley had a house here. Um, Oprah used to live in our county um, over in Rolling Prairie, I think it was, or New Carlisle. Is really close to Laporte, so our tiny little town has had some celebrities. Um, not just serial killers, <laughs> um, but it's a nice little town. I mean, like any town, it has its problems. But I've lived. Um, I lived in, in Tennessee for about a year, and I loved it there, but the company that I worked for shut down, and um, it was just, economically, it was a, not a very good place to live, but beautiful. The people could not have been more friendly and welcoming. Um, 
I mean, I got the whole, are you a Yankee thing all the time, which was just quite funny to me because I would tell them, no, I'm a Hoosier and Yankees are from New York and they would just kind of look at me like I was crazy, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. But other than the, the harassing, the people in Tennessee were just it, it, lovely. It was a lovely place to live. Um, I'm not a big fan of the snow, and they don't get a whole lot of snow, so that made me happy. <laughs> but um, I had to come back to Indiana when that factory closed down, and I came right back to my hometown. Um, and I've been here ever since. We have some lakes here. Um, a lot of people from Illinois have homes here. Um, it's kind of a, it has been a bedroom community, but the industry is really, really coming around in our small town. Oh, air bowl. And our town is growing. And it's nice. I mean, um, big news for us, we're getting a Starbucks, which I know there's like... Some people don't like Starbucks, and it's okay if you don't. But I love a nice dark roast from Starbucks. A little bit of cream. Yeah, that's heaven. But I'm a coffee addict. Anybody that knows me will tell you I'm just, like, totally addicted to coffee. I can't help it. Somebody that goes as much as I do needs a little bit of help. And for me, that comes in the form of coffee. And I usually speed through this part and just put some music or something in the background to entertain you. But I thought we'd take this time to chat. Now, I am filming um, a little bit ahead of time. And we'll release some of these videos as um, we get closer to the release date of the actual soaps. We're working now. Obviously, I'm working on the winter fragrances I had been doing all my fall but these will be basically Christmas time winter time releases man I just uh, I love that smell of cocoa it is so strong in this shop right now all right now we're just piping the tops of these And I have some cute little marshmallows that I made to decorate the tops. All right. And believe it or not, I have leftover soap that's never happened. What do I do? Just oops. That a little bit taller. All right. I am just squeezing the leftover in the bag into a separate mold here. And I'll be right back with you.
All right, those gloves were covered in soap and slimy, so I'm going to put on another pair of gloves here. And the first thing I want to do is find my alcohol and spray this down. Except for my shop is a mess. I have so much going on. We had a show this week, and here it is. We had a show this weekend, so we were packing up, and oh my gosh, the shop is such a mess. <coughs> now, I've had people ask, why do you spray your soap down with 90% rubbing alcohol? Um, they're natural salts when you create soap, and sometimes, um, especially with a sweeter fragrance, um, it can superheat, it can heat up a lot, and then it forces those salts to the top, and then it's called soda ash. It's completely harmless, I just don't like the way it looks. So you can see I made some little cold process soap marshmallows ahead of time. And I'm just going to stick these in here. Let's see, what other questions do we get asked a lot? I don't know, we had <laughs> a guy walk into our tent this weekend and go, wow, it smells in here, and walk right back out. <laughs> and my daughter and I just kind of laughed and looked at each other like, um, that's the point, it's supposed to smell good. And then uh, I had another woman walk in and pick up a bar now, the lilac bar literally has let me show you now these ashed up on me it's a good example of soda ash but the lilac bar actually has a little uh backwards here okay a little lilac on it the label says lilac soap a woman picks up the bar crams it up to her nose and says ew it smells like lilac <laughs> and we're <laughs> We just smiled and kind of laughed as she walked away. I'm like, doesn't it say lilac, like, right on the label? I don't know. People are funny. And it's okay. Like, maybe she didn't think it would smell so powerfully or, you know, so strongly like lilac. Um, li I love the lilac. It reminds me, I grew up on a farm, and my grandmother um, and grandfather lived on one side of the farm, and we lived kind of about maybe a half mile down on the other end of the farm like and then we we're surrounded by the actual farming grounds and she had in the middle of the property this long long hedge the lilac bush that was just it went on forever and they were huge and they were mature and when the breeze blew late spring early summer my bedroom window would be open because we didn't have air conditioning back then and um man, the smell of lilac would just come into my bedroom. So for me, it's a very nostalgic smell. I really love um, the lilac smell. Now, I'm not, um, I really, oops, you get over there just a little bit. Okay. I'm really not into florals. I'm not a very, I don't know, the floral fragrances overpower for me. I don't enjoy them <clears throat> as much as um, some other people do. And that's fine. Every nose is different. Um, you know, I, I know women who really enjoy the florals. It just, it's, you know, it's girly and feminine and they like it. But lilac is one of those that I actually do enjoy. It doesn't give me a headache. It's not overpowering. It's very delicate. I know I'm talking about lilac soap while I'm sitting here making hot cocoa soap. I, my brain's confused on the seasons, right? Um, but if you... Want to know how to make the marshmallows here. All I did was basically, um, when I was making soap a few months back, I overestimated on my recipe, so I had a lot more white left over than I had intended. My head's probably in the way here, sorry. Um, I had a lot more white left than I intended, so I just put a small round tip on my bag and piped it out onto wax paper and waited. Now they did follow. They're a little. Where are we at here? They're a little flat on one side. But I think that's okay. Um, 
Oops. And then I just let them sit um, till they were like a Play-Doh kind of consistency. And then took a sharp knife and cut them. And then used um, wearing gloves, of course, because you don't want to burn yourself. Uh, lie, uh, raw soap can burn you until it's done saponifying. Um, just kind of rolled it a little bit to try to get it to keep its shape and cut it and smooth the edges down um, with a gloved hand. And voila, marshmallows. Let's see, I'm running out of time here. It's about time. Let's see, what time is it? It's one o'clock. I have a half an hour until I have to go to my night job. But that's good on the marshmallows, I think. Oh, I got a couple more. Okay, good enough. I could do this forever. All right, and I want to grab a little bit of... Shimmer Gold Poor Jordan, she's going to miss out on all the glitter She hates glitter I'm the glitter machine Oh my goodness, it won't come out of the tin There we go We'll come back and cut this tomorrow so you can see the inside of the bars. I'm kind of interested to see how they look myself since this batter thickened up on me. That's what I get for not being patient So things are cool enough. But you can see here I am at 1 o'clock just finishing and I got a half an hour until I have to go to work. So I couldn't really afford to wait too much longer. But here we go and uh, we'll see you tomorrow while we cut the soap. It's about 20 hours later, and we're going to go ahead and cut the hot cocoa soap. Now I did notice, since it's a little batter thickened up on me, I do have a couple air pockets, but it's not bad. So there's the swirl design. We got the mocha down here, some of that gold up here, and the white running throughout. And each bar will have at least one of the marshmallows. And this will be available uh, around November 21st.